Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Andrea, your Real Life English Fluency Coach. And I think most of you know by now that I am in fact pregnant. I'm quite heavily pregnant right now, so not long to go. So I thought it would be a good idea to share some baby vocabulary with you today and also show you some of the items that you would need as a new parent. This vocabulary is important to learn because you probably hear it in TV series, movies, podcasts you listen to. So it's useful to know what these items are, especially as well if you are planning on maybe having a baby soon. I'll also explain the difference in vocabulary between UK and US because we tend to have a lot of words related to babies that are very different. Because here at Real Life English, we guide you beyond the classroom to live and learn and speak English in the real world. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell down below. That way you will not miss out on a single new lesson. Okay, so the first item that we're going to look at is probably the most expensive. It's the biggest investment and can, yeah, can really cost you an arm and a leg, we would say. Uh, which means that it's very expensive and that is the pram. So in the UK, this item is a pram. Um, it's too big for me to show you here and also we've actually packed it away because it takes up quite a lot of space. But in the US, they call this a stroller. Now in the UK, we do have a few more words for this. You might also hear push chair which is more for when the baby is sort of five or six months old and they go from the bassinet, the one where they're lying down flat, to the one that's like a chair uh, that they can sit on. So first it's a pram, then it's a push chair. Some people also call it a buggy. So just so that you know. Uh, however, in the US, it's a stroller. Another way of moving your baby around is with a baby carrier. Now, there are some called slings that look like this, and they're a bit more fiddly, I would say. Maybe they're a bit harder to put on. I haven't actually tried. We actually bought a carrier instead, which just seems a bit easier for us both to wear. And that way, if we go out for short trips or walks, we can carry the baby on us rather than having a pram to push. So the place where the baby sleeps, in the UK, we call this a cot and in the US, it's called a crib. So this is the same thing, just two different names. And what some people like to do for the first six months or so is have a co-sleeping crib where you can actually attach it to the side of your bed. It's like an extension of your bed, that way you're closer to your baby. And then after that, they can sleep in the cot or the crib that stands alone, even in their own room as well. Then you can also attach what we call a mobile onto the crib, which is one of those items that turn. Sometimes they play music, sometimes they have lights, and it just helps to relax the baby and maybe put them to sleep. In the US, they do call this the same name, but the pronunciation is different. So you'd probably hear them call it a mobile. Now, I mentioned the co-sleeping cot or the co-sleeping crib. In the US, some people also call this a bassinet, whereas in the UK, we don't really use this word. However, we do also sometimes use a Moses basket, which is called that because of the way that it is made. And it's basically because it's a woven basket, but lots of people have told me it's not really worth buying because the baby grows out of it after a couple of months. So we haven't opted for this. Now, lots of people might have a changing table in their nursery, which is the name that we use for the baby's room. But really for the first six months, the baby's going to be sleeping in the parent's room. So lots of people tell me that a changing table takes up a lot of space and really you're going to be changing your baby in the living room, in your bedroom, like everywhere. So we opted for a changing pad that we can move around the house, but it's still comfortable for us to be able able to change her and it actually just arrived so I'm going to show you the one that we have. So it's really nicely cushioned 
and I haven't taken it out of the plastic cover just because I don't want it to get all dusty um, and really what we would put here is maybe a muslin a cloth which I'll show you and explain to you what that is in a moment and be able to change the baby on this so what do you do on a changing pad? You change the baby's nappy. So I think you guys probably know what a nappy is, but um, this is what we call it in the UK. However, in the US, this is called a diaper. So you've probably heard that word a lot in TV series and movies. They call it a diaper, we call it a nappy. Also to clean up baby, you would use some baby wipes. That's what we call them, baby wipes. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some clothes. This in the UK we would call a vest. So you would definitely use it in the summer when it's really hot or in winter if you want to layer the baby's clothing if it's cold. Now in the US I believe they call this a onesie, whereas we don't really use this term in the UK. Um, so this one would just be a vest. And then this is what we would call a bodysuit or a baby grow. And I believe in the US, they also call it a bodysuit because it covers the whole body, all the arms. It even has these little foldable things here to cover the baby's hands so that they don't scratch their face. And it has the little booties or the like little socks so instead of having to put socks on the baby which everyone tells me just fall off and you end up losing them it's good to have a bodysuit that has the feet or the socks booties whatever you want to call them included and so that's what that looks like and this one has a zip so it's easier especially at night if you're changing nappies Whereas these sort of vests have what we call poppers. And they're called poppers because of the sound they make. I'm not sure if you can hear that. There you go. Yeah, so this one's a vest and this one is a bodysuit. So I mentioned that with the bodysuit, you can actually cover, some of them have an integrated piece of material where you can actually cover the baby's hands so that they're not scratching their face. But if you don't have that, you can have what we call mittens. So mittens are kind of like gloves that we wear in winter to cover our hands, but gloves, you can actually fit your fingers through them. Whereas mittens are just one big covering. So these are great for babies and for kids to stop them from scratching their face. Now, the next item, I haven't bought any just yet, but I'm sure I will be investing in some. It's what in the UK we call a dummy, which is this. And this is when baby is crying, when baby, you know, wants to go to sleep or you just want to help them to relax, you would use a dummy. Now, in the US, they call this a pacifier, which sounds a lot more technical. It comes from the word to pacify, the verb to pacify, which means to calm down in this way. So it's called a pacifier, but I think they do shorten it as well and call it passy so that it sounds a bit cuter. Um, and dummy actually as well is maybe a word you want to be a bit careful with because in the UK we would know that it's this baby item, but it can also be a derogatory term. If you call someone a dummy, you mean that they are stupid. So definitely use this word with caution in the US. So you've probably heard both of these words when watching TV series like Friends. And Friends is such a great show for learning English for this reason, because they use expressions and vocabulary that us natives use in our everyday lives and everyday conversations. So that's why we created our Fluent with Friends course. And with this course, you will learn with the first two seasons of Friends. You'll receive PDF power lessons straight to your email, vocabulary, memorization software, and access to our fluency circle global community. So if you haven't already tried it, you can do right now for free with our three-part masterclass. All you have to do is click up here or the link down in the description box below. Okay, so next I'm going to show you this, and this is called a muslin, muslin. 
and it's called this because of the type of material, the cloth that it is. They're usually made with 100% cotton and organic cotton is great because it's very soft. And these are really versatile. You can get them in different sizes. This is quite a large one that you can use to swaddle the baby. So basically to swaddle is to wrap the baby in this muslin, uh, wrapping in their arms as well so that they feel very secure and safe as if they were back in the womb. And it helps a lot of babies to sleep. Lots of people use muslins uh, to wrap the baby into sleep. You can also use it if you're nursing, which means if you are breastfeeding the baby or even if you're just feeding them with a bottle, you can use it to wipe their mouth and clean them, to burp them if you're holding them here and after you fed them, you want them to burp to release their gas. You can do that here and any vomit or spit up that comes up can go onto the muslin rather than your clothes. So as well as a muslin, we also invested in a sleeping bag. Now these have become really popular because sometimes with a swaddle, if the baby's very active and you haven't tightened it, you haven't wrapped it tightly, they can escape and their arms can escape and then they start waking themselves up by touching their face or scratching if their nails are long. Whereas these kind of keep them in packed really tight and they come in different thicknesses, whether it's for winter, summer or whichever season. And they're easy to use, especially at night because they come with a zip that unzips from the top, but also one that unzips from the bottom. So if you're changing at night time, I've been told it can be very useful. So we've got one of these to start off with. And then eventually it has poppers here again. Eventually you can also use it with the baby's arms out. So they don't have to be all snug wrapped in later on. They can grow with it. So it's called a sleep bag or a sleep sack, but also a grow bag because the baby can grow with it. And there's also one more way that you can keep your baby snug, whether it's in the cot, whether it's in the pram, and that's with a blanket. And this is a cellular blanket. You can see here the holes, um, the way that it's knitted makes it cellular, which means that it's safer for baby if it were to cover their face because it's breathable, but it also keeps them really, really warm. So the last thing I'm going to show you is this rattle. So we call it a rattle because of the noise that it makes. And these are great for getting baby's attention. It's also great for their development to follow the different colors and the sounds and things like this. They can also be used to help calm them down. If they are crying, sometimes they like that noise. And also some of them are great for when the baby is teething. So that's when they start to develop their teeth and it can be quite painful for babies. So we use what we call teethers and there is a variety you can get. Some rattles can also be used as teethers. And that's basically when the baby puts it in their mouth to help soothe their gums as their teeth are coming through. So those are all the items that I wanted to show you today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, learning more baby vocabulary and the differences between American and English words that we use for babies. You've also seen some items that new parents would need as well. So hopefully that has been useful too. So by the time you're watching this, it could even be that I've already had my baby. So you might be seeing me a little bit less on the channel but I will be back soon and if you want to keep learning I recommend you watch this lesson next to learn more about the difference between American and British pronunciation. My father is in the car. My father is in the car. She bought her daughter a bottle of water. She bought her daughter a bottle of water. Tomato.